Well, thank you, Austin. Thank you, thank you. Um, good morning. I am Paige. You guys, I don't know if you have seen me around ever. Like, sometimes I'll come on a Wednesday. Usually when there is a little kid screaming, you can find me nearby. Um, and that's usually the role I play in 910 is as Piper's mom and Austin's wife. Um, but I'm also one of our young adult pastors here at North Coast. I don't, have you guys heard of the Jordan? Okay. There is a group of young adults and we meet on Thursday nights. So when you guys graduate high school, there is somewhere for you to go. Um, so I'm used to speaking to 18 to 25 year olds. So I'm sorry, but I think you can do it with me, but I'm a little, I'm a little dry. So y'all got to lean in with me this morning. Okay. We just got to like take notes. I even made this paper for you because Austin's like, we're going to do fill in the blanks. And I'm like, I've literally never made a fill in the blank in my life. And then it printed and I'm embarrassed with how many fill in the blanks there are. So y'all are going to be busy. Okay. Are we ready for this? Okay. Um, okay. So does anybody have a job? Like you've worked something, even like babysitting or whatever. Really? Okay. Okay. That's like decent. You guys, my first job, I worked at a place called Papa Murphy's Take and Bake Pizza. Has any, have you, have you heard of Papa Murphy's? Anybody? Okay. Literally one person. They don't exist here. I grew up in Sacramento area. They're everywhere up there. How lame of an idea is this though? We make pizzas, but we don't cook them for you. You have to take and bake them at home. Okay. That's where I worked. Um, when it was slow, I would go out and I'd shake the sign. Um, and today we're going to talk about gratitude, but imagine if I go to work, I do a job, I get paid, a paycheck comes at that point, literally you guys, I'm not even that much older than you. Minimum wage was $8 and 50 cents. Okay. Um, yep. I get my little measly pay paycheck and then I go into my manager's office, Caitlin, I still remember her. Um, and I'm like, thank you so much for my paycheck. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful. This means so much to me. Oh my gosh, you shouldn't have. Like, no. That's not how working works. Like, if you do something, you have earned something and you've deserved it. And so when I get my paycheck, I'm like, absolutely, it should be there. There would be an issue if it wasn't there. Today we're going to talk about gratitude. We're going to talk about two different perspectives of how to walk through life. And honestly, this is your very first fill in the blank. God tells us in his word over and over and over. Gratitude is partnered with joy. And I think if we were to boil down, like what does anybody want in life? What we want in life we just want to be okay. <laughs> like we don't want to be anxious. We don't want to be afraid. We want to know that we're going to be provided for. Like we look to different things, success and friendships and relationships and all these things because we just, we want what this is. Like we want to be okay. We want joy, but I want to push us even deeper that this joy with God, it's something that is vibrant and it's something that is alive and it is something that is unchanging. And God partners this, like real true joy he partners over and over and over again with gratitude. So that's your guys very first, first fill in the blank. So my question for you, what comes first? Is it people who are joyful? Are they the ones who have gratitude and are thankful? Like joy brings out gratitude in people? Or is it that gratitude delivers in us this sense of joy? What do you guys think? Who thinks joy comes first? Anybody think joy leads to gratitude? Anybody think gratitude leads to joy? Some people, wait, raise your hand if you think gratitude leads to joy. Okay, what if gratitude and joy both came from the same thing and neither of them were delivering to each other? Um, but this is your next one. There is an outside cause to both. There is an outside cause to this gratitude and joy that, live, that we live our life that instead of approaching life, as if we have done this work and have earned something and have gotten our due and to every space and building and business and friendship and relationship and family that we live and exist in, instead of being like, am I getting what I deserve here? And it better be good. Having this kind of approach to life, like waiting for things, good things to come to us, and then we'll be grateful, and probably not even grateful because simply we just got what we deserved anyways. 
or this joy and this thankfulness of approaching life, not having these like crazy expectations about having these standards or these things that we're due, but instead having this appreciation that every single thing in our life, good, bad, otherwise, is an actual gift. Imagine walking around that it wasn't just this like practice of trying to be thankful, but that we actually had this approach to life that was like, think, like it's just a lighter, brighter joy of getting to walk around looking at things that God has given us as simply a gift. That's the goal, okay? That's our goal. So we're gonna talk through some of these concepts of gratitude and joy and all that today. Um, so let's get through this second little fill in the blank. So do you, the second one is there is an outside cause to both or source of both. And here is what the whole message is on. I'm going to give it to you right from the start, okay? Gratitude is, and joy are true positions of our heart. Positions of our heart. So I'm going to describe that for a second. Like a disposition, an attitude, an approach to life, as opposed to like what we're going to talk about, which is, not just a feeling, not just something we feel or practice. So having a grateful, a gratitude approach to life is a position of our heart. It's an approach, it's a perspective, not just something that occasionally we feel and not just something that we like try hard to practice, okay? That's literally the point. I wanna get these three concepts of gratitude out of the way before we get into like the nitty gritty Bible stuff this morning, you guys, I'm so excited. Um, but there's just three things I just wanna, this is gonna be like gratitude apart from Jesus is still a thing. There are plenty of people who do not know God, who do not believe in the Bible, who can practice thankfulness and gratitude. And guys, even that is a gift that God has given all of creation to be able to experience. Um, I firmly believe that when God created the world, and this is just a concept we have to think about, there are lots of pieces of creation, science, psychology, anything that God has created that he allows us to learn from him in. So <laughs> the world can experience gratitude. Here's three things that are just gonna be true, like natural law, human nature, Okay, the first one, I'm gonna argue, it's not, the, not a great way to look at gratitude, um, but oftentimes if thankfulness is something that people are trying to stir in themselves, this is apart from Jesus, being thankful for what you have is determined by how you compare to others. So I don't know if you guys are with me on this, but when we think about like, what do you have to be thankful for? And we, we kind of start peeling back the layers of like, what do I have that other people don't have? That's kind of like a lot of times where we go, right? Okay, I remember um, I grew up again in Northern California and in high school every spring break, guys, this was so much fun and I hope you guys get to do this one next, it was so much fun. Um, I grew up going to church. I was not really like into it. I was probably sitting in the crowd thinking like, great ideas. Can't wait to get to lunch. Um, truly, honestly, and if you're there, God bless you. Um, and would, we would get on these like big um, buses and we would drive like 12 hours down into Mexico. And I don't know if you, you guys have like done whitewater and maybe anybody went on the road trip last year. There's just something about like being with your friends on these drives that you're like, if I was with my family right now, this would be miserable, but we're with all our friends. This is so fun. Okay, so it was so much fun. We would get down to Mexico. We would have a whole week. We would like build houses and we would hang out with little kids and it was so much fun. But one of the big things about going on these mission, missions trips is that you look around and you see that you have so much more that you take for granted for than like 99% of the world. And there's something to that. There's something about the fact that like I can turn a faucet on and within seconds there's like hot water that's running and clean that's coming out of my thing that I just don't even pay attention to. I just am like, this is just part of life. Not really thankful for. But there's tons of people worldwide who don't even have running water. Like, so basically a lot of times when we talk about what are you thankful for, we try and look at like, oh, there's the homeless guy living on the corner. At least I have a roof over my head. So we start peel, trying to peel back, like, at least I have this. At least I have this. And we start practicing thankfulness from a place of 
comparison. At least I have my health. It could be worse. For sure. You know what? That is a great place to start in just talking about gratitude, but I'm going to argue that that's going to fall apart because honestly, comparing ourselves with others doesn't actually make us feel that much better. It just kind of feels like a guilt trip sometimes of like, why don't I actually feel grateful for things that I know I should be grateful for? But that's going to be part of what gratefulness looks like in the world. Two more things, and this is just going to be true, and I don't even think I have to like, we have to write these down, but we're going to. Um, you know what? If you're not a grateful person, you're just going to be less enjoyable to be around. People aren't going to be with you. Have you guys ever invited a friend over? And you've like thought through like, ah, oh, you know, we have some food here and like I got them a blanket and like we made this fun plan of what we were going to do tonight. And then like, they're just kind of like rude and they never say thank you. <laughs> and they just kind of complain about all the things that could be better. And you're like, I never want to have this friend over again. Like they're, oh, they're like not fun to be around. Or has anybody here ever babysat for like a little kid? Anybody ever babysat? Okay, and you know how like you like make them mac and cheese and you put it on the table and they take one bite and they're like, and then they run away and they don't eat anymore and they're like, never tell you thank you. Thank you. And you're like, I'm never coming back to this house. Like, I'm gonna go to the house with a nice kid. <laughs> like part of just not being thankful, you will write into your life that people just aren't gonna wanna be around you. Sorry. I just kind of think that's how God made some of the world is like, people don't wanna be around you if you're a brat. Okay. Um, the other one is that you're going to be less enjoyable to be with yourself. So if you've ever like stood in line and watched someone be like so rude to the person in front, like to the um, waitress or the server or the person taking an order, anybody been in those situations where your skin is crawling because there's someone who's acting like so rude? Okay. So uncomfortable. Okay. That's like my personal nightmare. Um, you know what I always think about? This might be kind of spicy. <laughs> I always kind of feel bad for the person who they're treating like that for sure. But you know what I feel really bad about? I'm always like, oh, that person has to go home with themselves. Like imagine having to just walk through your life like with instead of with gratitude and with this like entitlement and this what is owed to me and always being unhappy that things are happening for you and that like it's just like that just is like a bummer way to live so gratitude even if you're like I don't care about God let me tell you you can have something to be thankful for you got shoes on your feet let's just start there second of all Maybe it'll help you because I do believe that people aren't going to want to be around you. <laughs> and also, you got to be with yourself. So I think this is a worthwhile topic. But if we want gratitude, that is not just gratitude for those things' sake, but gratitude that is for joy. And I love 910 talks about how God describes life with him as life that's actually life. If God is going to pair these things together, like we need a new perspective. Not one like we're getting our due but one that actually is one that's just thankful because everything's a gift instead. So we're going to look at some scripture this morning together. <sighs> I got through that intro so much faster than 9 a.m. So, so you're welcome, okay? I'm going to keep going. At, we're going to keep going, okay? Okay, okay. So here we go. We are at, so what makes the difference for the believer? Will you guys turn with me to Daniel chapter 4? Daniel 4. It is in your Bible. If you, who was here last week? Raise your hand. Raise your hand in the sky. Oh, oh, okay, thank you. None of you are doing it. Ah, okay, I'll do it for you. Okay, so we're going to turn to Daniel. If you go to the middle, guys, I think that I'm going to try and be a DJ because that went so well for me. Okay, um, <laughs> Daniel 4, chapter 4, verse 28. It's like halfway a little bit more turned. Who's in Daniel 4 with me this morning? Are we there? We're there. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, so Daniel 4. We're going to look at verse 28. Um, we're going to learn about a king. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Does that name sound familiar at all? Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, so he is a king. He is a historical king. He's not just a Bible character. Imagine things in the Bible actually happen. Um, don't just imagine. It is a true fact. And King Nebuchadnezzar, like if there was like a history channel thing that we put up about him, 
what you would learn about him is that he is one of the most influential, powerful, and successful people to have ever walked the world, earth, like in history. He had accumulated more land, he had accumulated more wealth, he had accumulated more power than almost anybody to have ever walked this earth in history. He's like mega, mega power man over here. And he, in this passage that we're going to read, he steps up and he has a moment where he looks at all of the things that he has earned, all of the things he has accumulated, and we're going to watch what happens. Because if this world is just this world, he probably has a right to do this. But what we're going to learn it with is if we want to have a new approach, one that involves gratitude and joy together, <laughs> there's actually a different reality we're invited into that's the truth. But we got to look at King Nebuchadnezzar first to get there. So this is in verse 28. It says this, all this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. 12 months later, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, is not this the great Babylon I've built as the royal residence by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty? He says, I have done this. I have acquired this. It is through my leadership. It is through my persuasion. It is through my power. It is through people getting people on my side. It is through probably the oppression that King Nebuchadnezzar put people under that he has acquired all of this land. He looks at it. And it's for me. It's all for me. It's for my majesty. King Nebuchadnezzar is like, I've done it. He achieved it. And you know what? We might look at this and we might be like, he's like, oh, look, he's having a moment. He's being grateful for all he's done. <laughs> and then even as the words were on his lips, a voice came from heaven. This is not how God deals with us all the time. Thank God. Otherwise we would be smited on like an everyday basis, like moment by moment. Um, but God's going to come in here and he's going to be like, that's what it might look like to you. There's actually a much higher power and a much bigger situation going on than what it just looks like to you, King Nebuchadnezzar. So let's see what happens to him. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. You'll be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is so sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. So your guys' next fill in the blank, the origin by whom everything is a gift. Nothing is earned or deserved. Basically what is happening in this passage <laughs> is if we look at anything through the perspective of I have earned this, I deserved this, this is just what should come to me, which is honestly so much of our approach to life, right? Kind of like just expecting things to happen for us. Like, yes, mom and dad, it is your job to put food on the table for me. Thank you. We don't even say thank you because it's their job. What this is telling us is that if we were to pull the origin back to anything, it is not based on something that we have earned or deserved Everything is a gift. For King Nebuchadnezzar, let's just look at him for a second. He could say, it was my leadership. It was my power. It was my gift of persuasion. But even those things all happened and were gifted under the sovereign hand of God. And the minute God wanted to do anything different with it, he did. Which means every single thing in your life has passed by a sovereign God and he has either gifted you, he has maybe taken something away so that you could acknowledge that you are not in charge, which is actually the best gift in itself. Or he has given you something, like a true gift. Like if we were to pull the origin back, like where did that start from? Anything that we think we deserve that we're not grateful for, let's all just take a breath together. <sighs> Even that, well, I'm a human being, I deserve to have, have that breath. On what basis? Like literally on what basis? God has given you lungs. You did not do anything to form those lungs. Guys, there is a baby forming inside of me right now. Yes, amen. Okay, this baby girl has done nothing to form the lungs inside of her. 
Let's hope she has them, okay? Just kidding, she does. I got an ultrasound. Okay, um, like we do nothing to form that. Like that breath that you just had, that was a gift. That one too, and that one too. And you know how your heart's beating right now? You didn't even know it. Well, now you're all paying attention to it. You're like, oh no, my heart's beating fast. Now I'm thinking about it. Okay, um, all that. There is everything in life can come to us through a gift. So instead of having this perspective, even your paycheck, that what I just had described in the beginning of like, how weird would it be if I walked into my boss's office and be like, thank you so much. Like even that, the fact that I have the ability to show up somewhere and follow through on something, that I have like two arms and two legs to be able to make pizzas that we don't even cook, like those kinds of things, like that is a gift. And so there is a possibility to approach life from a different perspective. We don't have to be the King Nebuchadnezzars who look around and look at what have I done and what's for me, which is really what he does. So we're actually going to look at a different verse. It's in Colossians. Colossians is in your New Testament, so it's towards the back of your book. And if y'all turn there, you'll go past Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You'll go past the bigger books like Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. And then amidst all those little books is the book of Colossians, and it comes right after it, Philippians. Okay, I just said so many books of the Bible. Did I sound smart? Thank you. Okay, um, so we're in Colossians and we are in verse, we are in chapter one. We're about to underline in your Bibles a verse that literally, Hudson, I'm gonna tattoo it on the inside of your eyelids so you never forget it, okay? So when you close your eyes, this is what you see because we all need this reminder like over and over again. Do you want the tattoo? Okay, she's getting it too. You need one too. You need one too. Okay, we're all, we just gotta remember this, okay? We gotta remember this truth because the reality is that this is true. This is true. We might live our lives thinking like I have to acquire things. Like we might live our lives just with what we see in this world and what we have and we're looking at it like, what can I be thankful for? Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying to be a grateful person because apparently it's better for me. Um, there is a reality that's so much higher and we're going to look at it right now. Um, it's going to be in Colossians, verse chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 16. And y'all, if you do have your pens, this is one to like star whatever you do with it because this is it. This is, this is true, even though, guys, I wish this changed every moment of every day of my life. I wish it did. It should. It, it doesn't. So it might sound like dull, but this is crazy that this is true. Are you ready for it? For in him, this is talking about Jesus. All things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Where Nebuchadnezzar looked out and he said, this is by me and this is for me, the reality is that Jesus, the one who God sent because he loved you, him, all things are actually like the real reality of what we're gonna see when we meet Jesus face to face one day on the other side of this earth is that all things were created by him and for him. So here's my invitation for you. The goal like, what is all of this for? We have the invitation to adjust, adjusting our expectations. So this is one of the fill in the blanks. Adjusting our expectations frees us to embrace a greater, this is where we sound all like, it's real spiritual, reality. There is an invitation here. We don't have to live life as if I'm just getting my due paycheck. <laughs> There's actually a reality that none of this was actually made by you. It's all a gift. And honestly, our comfort, our enjoying something, our ability to have joy, guys, that's not even the purpose of life. That's not even it. There is a God who made it all and it's all for his glory. But if you guys will look up with me in verse chapter 12. I mean, verse 12, chapter one, it's just right up from the one that we all just underlined and tattooed in our eyes. Yep, that one. Um, verse 12 says this, giving joyful thanks. Remember, those things are together. 
to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The person who the actual reality is that it's for him and through him, that person. And then he says, you know what? That's actually the whole like purpose of life, but he will invite you. He sees you, he lowers himself and he invites you to partake in his inheritance to partake in his life, to partake in his joy. He qualifies you, not because you've earned it or you deserve it, but he just grants it as a gift to do life with him. To be found in relationship with a God who literally is in control of all things. To consider him your provider. To consider him the giver of all good things in your life, of all things in your life. Like, that's the invitation. He doesn't have to make it about you. But you know what God does? He even, like, lowers himself. This is the whole concept of Jesus. He emptied himself for you. Holy moly, is there anything to be thankful for? Absolutely. That he would take us empty, tired, seeking people, wondering what is this life about, and he would come for you because he made you and he loves you and he knows you. He knows everything about you. That's the song that we just sang. And he came for you. The person who it's actually all for emptied himself on your behalf. So for sure, there's like tons, of, there, there is the reason to be thankful for. Here's the deal. The gospel is the ultimate source of gratitude. It displays the heart of God that he loves you enough to leave himself behind on your behalf. And you guys want to know something true about God that I believe actually also draws out gratitude in us? He is the perfect parent. He's the perfect parent. He knows exactly what you need. I have a little girl back there. She is, li- hi. <laughs> He's so cute, I can't handle it. But like truly, I can know, she can be having a total fit and she can think something's the worst, but I actually know in my maturity I know what's best for her in the long run, and so I'm gonna follow through. You guys know what's easier to do? Just let her have whatever she wants. Give her the gummies over and over and over again, and she could sit there and be like, thank you, I have so much to be thankful for, but you know what that's gonna do? It's gonna make her a horrible adult. That wouldn't actually be loving towards her. You guys, we have the perfect parent who actually is like working (laughs) in our lives on our behalf for our benefit all of the time. And and honestly, like he is giving us so many good things every single day that are just gifts of love on your behalf. What a different way to approach the world than, yep, that's mine. Yep, I deserve this. I'm so unhappy. I didn't get that thing I was expecting but it was, never, it was never due us anyways. It's all through him and for him, yet he gifts us anyways. We have a reason to be thankful. So we're gonna talk about just three things about the, some basics on gratitude and then kind of how to live that out <laughs> or what it looks like to practice that and live that out. And so um, that's our Bible like background, um, but we're just gonna like have a quick conversation on what this actually like, what it looks like to live in that reality because the truth is, I don't wake up every day like singing and skipping of like, God, I'm so thankful for everything, even the hardship, even this. And like, wow, God, I'm so thankful that I'm breathing right now. Oh my gosh. You guys know that feeling like after you're sick and you wake up and you're like, I can actually breathe through my nose right now. And you're thankful for it for like 10 seconds and then you forget and you move on. Like literally, like we're just forgetful people. We don't live in the spirit of gratitude all the time, but that's where God says joy is. That's what, like, a lifestyle that God invites us into, not just a practice. And so we're going to talk a little bit about just some basics to that from what we've already talked about. So in conclusion, gratitude. This is your next fill in the blank. Did we skip some? Yeah, okay, the Colossians one is the God who all things are through and all things are for has invited, qualified, and loved you. Okay, 
The one above that, the ex the it's expectations and then reality. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Basics on gratitude. Number one, gratitude is not a performance. It is a position of the heart. So we kind of opened up talking about that, and I want to just like hit back to that. Being grateful is not just something like that happens when we make a list. It's actually an approach to life. It's an approach instead of like an entitlement approach or I deserve approach. It's everything is just truly a gift. Guys, that is something hard to live in, but <laughs> like we have to know that it is, God's, it is God's heart for you that he would cultivate that inside of you. Like he, that is like, if we're gonna live life and become more like Jesus, which is God's heart for you. He wants you to experience freedom. It is so much more freeing. Life is light, life is joyful. When we don't come with this like, I deserve something, but when we actually have this posture of thankfulness, it is God's heart for you to have that. And so, okay, God, if your spirit, it, his, this is crazy, God's spirit comes and he moves and he works in us to give us this freedom and this joy and this life that he talks about, part of his goal is going to be to take our hearts to a position of gratitude. That's going to be, that's part of it. Okay. So we might think, well, then now I got a lot of work to do. Cause I got to look more like Jesus. I got to do the right things for God. No, like it is going to be his job to cultivate that position in us. It's not just us doing it out of performance. Kind of like what Austin was saying last time. It's not just about trying harder to be grateful, grateful people. It's about God creating a gratefulness inside of us. So that's the first one. The second one I'm a strong believer is that gratitude is not based on comparison with others. It is based on comparison of your life in Christ and apart from Christ. Okay, so kind of like the like, what I talked about in the beginning, like kind of we get confused that gratitude is looking at how we have things better than other people and that's something to be thankful for. I'm gonna argue that even if we were in the worst place in the entire world, like everything was falling apart, we could not find a situation that was more desolate than where we were. We were on the bottom. God would still want gratitude to be something that's in our hearts. So it's not really just about comparing ourselves to other people. There is a truth that we have something when we are in Christ than before. And my challenge for you is if you're like, my life would look no different if I didn't believe in God, you're missing something. You're missing, and you know what? It's okay. Like, it's okay to be in a place that you're missing something, but just acknowledge it. Like, my life would not look any different if God wasn't a part of it. I promise you, you are missing the gratitude and the joy that is there um, because there is a real difference that happens in our spirit that happens when we can look at apart from God, I would be there, but with him I'm here and I'm just thankful for that. That's where gratitude can come from. Without him, I am wretched, <laughs> destined to a place I don't wanna go. And with him, I'm saved and loved and known and held by the creator of the universe. Holy moly. Okay, um, number three, while we have all the reason for gratitude, I'm telling you, there's a God who loves you, who knows you, who calls you his child, who came for you, who gave up his most precious possession just for you. Like that is who our God is. We have a reason for gratitude. It's there. But our hearts are so easily discontent. Right? Like we can work really hard to think of things that we're grateful for, but just the reality is honestly, so much of our time, we're just, we just are kind of bummed out. <laughs> Our expectations aren't being met. We're disappointed. We wish things were going better for us. We're kind of grumpy. Guys, you want to know what? Welcome to human nature, okay? Like, there is not something, I mean, there's something broken in all of us, but there's not something like you're doing something like so wrong. Like, that's just part of what life is. You want to know something beautiful about our God? He knows that, and he loves you anyways. And when you are being the brat that nobody else wants to be around, you know who wants to be with you? God. And so, truly, 
like just, I think that this is just a truth to know. Our hearts are going to wander towards entitlement and grumpiness and discontentment. It's just as part of being a human. There's nothing necessarily like significantly wrong with you compared to the person next to you. There's something wrong with all of us, truly. But just know, like, we don't have to have these, like, crazy expectations on ourselves. Like, God loves us there in our messy, bratty, entitled attitudes. He loves us even there. He loves us when we're apathetic. And you know what? That's something to be thankful for. But we're not even thankful for it sometimes. Okay, it's fine. Just know you're messed up and you need Jesus. Okay, the last three things, practices of gratitude. I have literally no more time left, so I'm going to go through these things really quick. Number one, it's the 10 things a day. You guys got challenged to do it last week. Did anybody try and come up with 10 things a day this week that you were thankful for? Okay, yes, yes. Anybody else? Yes, okay, you guys. Whoever did it, how hard is it? Literally, like day one, you're like, all right, 10 things. I got five members in my family. Okay, I got this. Like day one, fine. Day six, you're like, I can't think of a single thing I'm thankful for. Like it's really hard. Or you think of one thing, but by the time you get to 10 on the list, it is so hard heart. This is a practice. This is the next fill in the blank. It says disclaimer. Practices don't make you grateful. They make you available. Just practicing gratitude does not make you a grateful person. They just make you available to God who's able to instill this inside of our hearts. Okay, so this practice of the 10 things a day, that girl back there, every night when I'm putting her down for bed, Piper, what are you thankful for today? She just looks around the room Every day, she says, I'm thankful for the lights in my room. And honestly, you know what that does with me? I'm like, I'm thankful for the lights in your room. Like, we live in a house that has lights in it that we can turn on. And you know what she does with my favorite? She goes through, like, all the features of my face. She says, I'm thankful for mommy's lips and mommy's ears and mommy's eyes and mommy's nose. And I'm like, oh, I'm never thankful for that stuff. But, like, she's saying it, and it's actually, like, stirring in me, like, oh, I'm actually really thankful. I have a nose that I can breathe out of and smell things. And I have eyes and I can see. And I have ears and I can hear. And wow, I'm actually really thankful for these things. So this, it just is a part of like helping produce that in us. But the actual act of it isn't necessarily like the gratitude in our hearts. It's just making us available to experience that. The other thing is when life is hard, find a grace gift. Grace gift is your next fill in the blank. And um, literally, if you're having the hardest time finding something to be thankful for, go sit in the sun and tell God that you're thankful that the sun is hitting your skin right now and it feels good. Literally it. If you're on your worst day, do something so basic. Eat something that you enjoy. God, thank you. This tastes so good. (laughs) Whatever it is, find something to tell, like just to be thankful for. Find a little grace gift. Um, And then the last one is be honest. And I will be preaching this till the... I die. Um, God wants you in your honesty, not in your performance. And so just tell him exactly where you're at. God, I don't have a spirit of gratitude. I'm not thankful. I should be thankful that you died on the cross for me, but it's doing nothing for me right now. So I'm not. You want to know what? Being honest, it's going to open up a conversation with the Lord that you never knew you could have. So there you go. Um, Here's your challenge for this week. You guys have the opportunity to write some thank you cards. And here's my challenge for you is to find somebody in your life that you take for granted that's actually, if you trace it back to an origin, it's just a gift. There's thank you cards back there. They have them all ready for you. There are thank you cards. And we're just, it's just the act. It's just a practice. It's just in making yourself available that instead of trying to receive something as like, I deserve this, it's us saying, I don't deserve this. You're actually a gift and you're letting that person know. Okay, that's literally my sermon. Y'all gotta go. I'm gonna pray for you in like 10 seconds. God, I thank you for each nine, 10 individual here. Lord, you are the giver of a grateful position and attitude and approach to life. And so Lord, we just ask that you would still instill that in us. We love you, God. Amen. Thank you, Paige. Hang on a second. We're gonna thank you, Paige. Thank you, Paige. Thank you, thank you.